Hello, Year 6. Welcome to Wednesday's story time. Uh, so we'll continue with Sky Circus on Chapter 10. Now, if you remember, the children um, and Malkin had eaten so well. Malkin had wound down, had me, his clockwork had wound down. Uh, but Robert and Lily had eaten some truffles and had slowly gone off to sleep. So, Chapter 10. Robert woke with a splitting headache. His right arm, the one he'd slept on, felt dead. He fancied he could still taste the sugary grit of the chocolates in his mouth. A sickly, sticky feeling filled his belly, like greasy stones grinding together. The ripe tang of the animals wafted through the cabin, along with their whinnies, growls and grunts, which made Robert think of some strange interspecies conversation. The hard wooden floor beneath him was no longer juddering, and the hum of the engines had ceased. That could mean only one thing. The sky circus was no longer moving. They'd arrived at their destination. He shifted onto his back and took up his cap, took up, uh, up his cap from where it had fallen onto the floor. Then he rubbed the pins and needles from his arm until it came back to life. When he sat up, the heart-shaped chocolate box slid from his lap, and a second rancid wave of biliousness hit him like a runaway steam wagon. He tossed the empty box aside and gagged. He felt awful. The last thing he recalled was a sudden, unnatural heaviness in his head and a sensation like being dropped down a well. He looked back at the box suspiciously. Was it the truffles? Had they been drugged? He remembered the clown giving sorry, he remembered the clown giving Lily the special box in the big top, and the men crowding in afterwards to capture them. They'd probably been expecting a slower target. But Slimwood and Madame Lyon's mane had caught them anyway in the end, he thought angrily. He got to his knees and looked around. Lily and Malkin were sleeping on the far side of the cargo bay. Lily had passed out with her coat open and her scarf draped oddly across her body. Malkin had wound down and was curled at her feet. Robert shuffled over and gently shook Lily by the shoulder. Wake up, he whispered. I feel terrible, Lily moaned, opening her eyes a slit. You look it, he retorted. Thanks a lot. Where are we? I've no idea. We appear to have landed. How did we sleep through that? I think there might have been something in the chocolates. Really? She rubbed her eyes with a palm. Everything's spinning. It will for a while. Take deep breaths. He put a hand on her back and helped her sit up. Eventually she started to feel a little better. She brushed her hair from her face and found Malkin's winding key around her neck and leaning forward started to wind him. The fox's gears tightened and clicked into place with each turn of the key. When Lily had finished, the cogs inside him fizzed and ticked into movement, and he came to life, blinking his coal black eyes, and staring at the cage of wild beasts and the horses in their stables. I forgot about this balloonatic arc of misfits, he chirped. You were halfway through telling a story, Lily. I thought we were going to take it in turns to stay awake. What the clank happened? Well, you wound down, Lily said, and Robert and I passed out. We think the chocolates were drugged. It had to be for you to sleep through such a, st a stench, Malkin said, sniffing the air. This place stinks worse than a dead rat's smelly socks. What time is it? Lily fished around in her, in her pockets of her coat and took out her pocket watch, flipping open the lid. 9.15. She fiddled with the fob. Unless it's lost time overnight. Well, it shouldn't have. Robert stood and peered out through the porthole. A low slung sun hung in a white sky, flecked with slate grey clouds above a clearing surrounded by autumnal trees. In the distance, higgledy-piggledy, tall stone buildings clustered together as far as the eye could see. Beneath the porthole, a group of men were throwing out mooring ropes, fixing the gondola to the ground. Others were busy erecting the kiosk and the site's exterior fence. The lunk pounded ar around every everyone in creaking circles, his arms clasped behind his back like a jailer, while his dim headlamp eyes swept the workforce, keeping everyone in line. Robert watched him nervously. It really is an odd circus, he said at last. Why do you think they well, what, do you, what do you think they want from us? Me, or at least my cock heart, Lily scars itched. She buttoned her coat across her front. Robert dragged himself away from the window. Why so? he asked. 
You saw the way Slim, Slim Wood and Lions Mane used the other hybrids in the show. Playing on their differences, distorting their natures. They exploit hybrids and I am one. So all I can imagine is that they must have similar plans for me. The pair of them were, def uh, were definitely the ones who sent this. Her fingers traced the pattern of the ammonite on the front of the red notebook. Goodness knows how they got hold of it. It's a clanking conundrum to be sure, Malkin scratched at an ear with his back foot. Robert nodded anxiously. He couldn't help thinking Lily was right. He feared for her safety in a place like this. Horrible visions of what might happen to her. To both of them, swirled around inside him. What she would do? What, what should we do? He asked at last. There's nothing we can do, Lily said. Except wait. She opened the notebook and flicked past pages of technical drawings and scribbled records. Shall I read another diary entry from the notebook? She took a breath and, over the growls of the animals, began at the top of the next page. Tuesday the 23rd of September, 1884. Riverside Walk, Chelsea. That was 17 years from the last entry, Malcolm, Malkin squealed. And the day of my first birthday? Lily bit anxiously at her fingernail. Which means Grace would have been 37 and married by this point, Robert said. What could possibly have happened to her that meant she stopped writing in her notebook for 17 years? Who knows? Lily read on. I found this book whilst going through my old papers. I've been examining it, examining it uh, to reacquaint myself with my ideas for the flyology project I dreamed once of creating. But my most important creation is not represented here, and so I've decided to remedy that by writing about my darling daughter, Lily. Today is Lily's first birthday. We have decided to throw her a party. This afternoon, in fact. We've recently installed ourselves in a rented house in Riverside Walk. The house is barely decorated and we've no servants to speak of, so we'll have to make do. It will be a simple affair. Myself, John and a few friends and family. Simon Silverfish is invited. Lily will be baptised soon and he is to be her godfather. He and John have become firm friends since they set up their business together making mechanicals. Lily is so beautiful. She has strands of flame red hair, thin as cotton, rosy cheeks and a smile that lights up my heart every time I see it. We will do our utmost to make this birthday special for her and everyone hereafter. 